Hello. Hello. You're all, um, no, what did I say? Um, ni hao. For our visitors from Tsinghua, Professor Lee. Um, bon dia. For Raquel from Brazil. And whatever else we say from different parts of Britain. Uh, you're all hugely welcome here today for our uh, annual research conference. It's going to be a great day. My name's Peter Bonfield. I'm the Chief Executive of BRE. And I'm just going to say a, a few words of welcome at the beginning. Uh, this is really a, a tremendous event. Our university centres have been going for around 10 years. We have an incredible research resource, research capability. We've produced papers, research, knowledge, and people who are now studying in universities, have become lecturers, professors, are working across our industry to help the built environment to be better. Tremendous track record. What's really important going forward is we get better at synergizing, understanding what we do, and bringing together the various bits of wonderful research we do into a coherent system, which is then deployed through BRE and its partners to make impact. Impact is something that's essential for each of your universities. It's a measure of success. It impacts how much research funding you get going forward. And it's really important for us because that's what we do in BRE. We take science and we deploy it and translate it to make impact. And the thing that motivates us all here is to do great science, great engineering, and then actually to see it making a difference in the field to our environment, to society, to our economies in different parts of the world. So you are all hugely welcome. We're going to have a great day. We're going to hear a whole host of presenters covering their work, some people just getting going, some people who have been around the block a few times and uh, appear recognised by their peers as being leaders in the world. Tremendous array. The, the papers are put together in this document. Again, this represents, this is like a written format that represents the incredible um, and extensive research programme we have. I commend this to you. And really today is about listening. It's about debating. Use the coffee sessions and use the lunch sessions to get to know each other. Try and speak to people you don't know rather than you do know. And then hopefully through social media, through whatever other ways you communicate, we end up at the end of the day with much more of a cohort that are cooperating together to mutual advantage to make a difference. So enjoy your day. Where's, where's Vicky? Ah, yeah. oh, come join me up here, Vicky. Yeah. So I'm going to hand over in a minute to Deborah Pullen, who's our BRE Group Research Director, who's going to chair the day and is accountable for our program. Mm -hmm. But Vicky, I'll bring you up right at the beginning. Uh -huh. Because Vicky is our strategic research manager, is that your title? Yeah, that's right. And she's the one who's put together this amazing document. She's organised the day. It started really well. The cakes were really good. <laughs> the coffee was there. Yeah. The signs are great. And um, can we start the day by pre please giving Vicky a round of applause for all the work she's put into today? Oh, yeah. Well done. Thank you very okay. much. Now go and make sure the whole day is brilliant, <laughs> like, like all the preparation. Anyway, with no further ado, I'll hand over to Deborah, who's going to take us through the day. Brilliant. Thank you, Thank Peter. You. So, um, again, very warm welcome um, from, from uh, one Brummie to welcome you to Birmingham. Um, I'm just going to um, set the scene, really. Um, and, and really pick up on some of the points Pete said. You know, our research objectives at BRE are very clear. Um, you know, it's taking research and creating and enhancing transformational products. You know, we're all about the impact that we create. Our success is measured by the fact that people give us the time of day, come and buy our services, read our publications, and um, that's really important to us. So we have to get it right. Um, it's also about creating world-class leaders of the future. Um, and and also, when we set the university programme up 10 years ago, we recognised, particularly in sustainability, but actually across built environment, um, we needed to pump prime and create new talent and new knowledge and new data, not just for us, but for our clients and for our industry um, to make it competitive. So growing the research capability has always been a, a primary driver. An extra objective which we're really focusing on, and I'll talk a little bit just at the very end, is about digital by default, because we all know it's a digital age now, so, and it can have such a massive impact on how we do research, how we share it, um, and, and how we create products which everyone can use. So those are our, if you like, our key objectives. 
and, and our products are these products. And more and more, you'll start to hear that we, we're much more aligned now with the research we do with our partners to support our primary products, because those are the ones that um, are going to transform built environment. And, and therefore, we have research priorities that come from that. Still very broad, though. Um, and, and actually, you know, we're, we're going through a whole exercise again in BRE to really highlight what our priorities are for the next three years, and the research needs will come from that. And tomorrow, for those of you who are staying on for the workshop, the students, you'll, we'll really drill down on the research that you're doing and how you think it might impact built environment in the next 10 years. Um, and, you know, our facilities are really critical. They're expensive, but they're critical. They differentiate us. We create new data that other people use as well. Um, and, you know, we have a, a, a significant facility at Watford, but also increasing the innovation parks are a key part of that. They're a test platform in their own right. So, again, I know some of you already work with um, the, the park in Scotland, and obviously our, our partnerships abroad really have been built on um, uh, the innovation park in China and, and in Brasilia, but there will be more to come. And our, our ambition is to network even more with facilities um, across the world. Um, and, and our partnerships are, are really important to us. And, and as Peter said, we started 10 years ago really to focus down. We needed to try and create and pump prime and create growth, and that's the ambition. More partners have joined, and, and we're on a mission with that. But we have to be really clear on how do we take the outputs to market and support them. Um, and, and actually, our collaborations are already not just with the, uh, our strategic partners, but you know we work across a lot of universities, as you would expect. And now with the Constructing Excellence joining BRE, they also have um, a significant network with industry and academe. So we're going to bring that together. And I'd, I just want to hand over to you now to tell us more about why you want to be involved with BRE. At BRE, we're driven by research and innovation and continue to extend our reach beyond the UK. Our collaboration with BRE and the work of the five students that they've sponsored is absolutely pivotal to a range of academics and their research groups and portfolios. It broadens our reach and it is enabling, enabling us to grow into new areas of inquiry. Our connection with BRE facilitates international collaboration, most notably uh, through activities relating to the innovation parks. It has been essential and uh, we wouldn't exist uh, as we do today uh, without the support from the BRS, BRE Trust. Well, since 2006, over the last 10 years, the BRE Centre at Bath has doubled in size, both in terms of academic staff and PhD student numbers, and also in terms of research activity. Being part of BRE Trust, has provided good opportunities for us in our centre here in Brasilia, the central part of Brazil. The first international centre of BIE Trust. So I think for me the real reason that I was drawn to this PhD is because of the topic that was proposed, which is community resilience to natural hazards in low-income countries. And prior to this I was working for a humanitarian and development organisation. I wanted to do a PhD following a, a Masters, so I was interested in doing uh, more deeper research in, in the field of energy systems. Um, I thought it would be a, a real sort of intellectual challenge. Through my affiliation with the BRE Centre, I had the opportunity to travel to the United States and undertake a visiting researcher's position with the National Institute of Standards and Technology. It was a really, really good opportunity and I met some great people and worked on some really interesting projects. I'm well aware of BRE um, internships uh, with um, some BRE centres around not only the UK but around the world. So I think that would be um, yeah, a really good opportunity to keep going.
all really, doesn't it? So thank you very much, actually, for those of you when I, I know at short notice you sent some film. We will be using the other footage in other areas, and actually part of Vicky's job will really be to um, manage a programme of much more engagement with you on your journey and your story. So we, we will set up um, times at which you can tell us all about your projects and, and, and going forward. So, But thank you very much for, for sort of indulging in this um, for us. So really, just to set the scene, and why Birmingham? Well, actually, it's not just because I was born here. Um, there are lots of um, things about Birmingham that we can draw on when we think about the research that we do. And so I just wanted to just spend five minutes quickly just telling you a little bit about the history and what's happened in Birmingham and the landscape that we have now. And actually, Birmingham is not that old in relation to many cities. You know, in the early 1700s, were less than 10,000 people lived here. It was almost a village. <laughs> and uh, farming, agriculture and things. But then we had the sort of, you know, the, the, the onset of the Industrial Revolution and people coming here. And, um, and actually you can see on the graph how the population has really increased exponentially over about 150 years with the Industrial Revolution. You know, the first canals, and actually that's why we're here, because this is where the canals are. And you'll see later, for those of you staying, when you wander through that, you know, just over the road is Gas Street Basin. And this is a very um, important part of Birmingham. When I was growing up, it was derelict. You could wander around here and, and you know, shopping trolleys and everything in, in the cut, as we called it. Um, and, um, and there was nothing, derelict factories. And now they've regenerated, and, and it's a real mix of old and new. Um, other things about Birmingham, obviously, the first hospital, actually, um, that was a, a, a specific hospital, late 1700s. Um, the first London to Birmingham railway 1838, um, and then actually the canals declined somewhat after that. But these are all major infrastructure things that have really shaped the face of Birmingham. The university, where I did my PhD and postdoc, um, opened in 1909. We have five universities in Birmingham now, with nearly 75,000 students. Um, Peaky Blinders, you can't come to Birmingham without me mentioning Peaky Blinders. For those of you who watch the television programme, this was where crime not like you know, most cities, cr crime really hit. And, and it actually was in the part of Birmingham I grew up in, in Small Heath. And, um, and when you watch the programme, it gives you a real feeling for what it's like for people to live in, uh, in society about that time when they'd had nearly 100 years of um, industrial growth. But for, poor, for, for normal people, the working people, it wasn't that great. Um, and I, th I think as you go forward, you see... I guess, the scars of that in, in cities. And in 1956, you know, 20% of the homes in Birmingham were considered to be unfit to live in. And, and there was a massive regeneration programme at that time um, in knocking down many of those back-to-back -back houses and, and replacing them with, with better. We had the Bullring Shopping Centre in 1964. And, uh, and again, that's still there, but with a, a, an upgrade. And, and I think it's interesting when you look at any city, this could be any city, really. Um, all cities have a history. They have a past, a present, and they have a future. And I think one of the things we have to consider is when you're designing a city, you very rarely start from scratch. And even if you do, you've really got to think ahead because whatever you do now, you've probably got to live with for the next 100 years. And once it's there, it's, it's very difficult to, to change massively. We don't know what the future is going to be, but we do know it's going to be probably different from now. And wherever you are in the world, whatever pace of change there is, it's really important that you look at that. And the research that you do will help to inform that. And one of the things I think that I just want to bring out today and we'll hopefully see is the multidisciplinary approach we need to consider for research. It isn't just about the structures. It isn't just about the social science is about looking at this from a perspective of creating a world for people. Um, so I think um, part of today is about reflecting a little bit on that and, and we'll bring that up tomorrow.